Tell me, do you bleed? You will. What the fuck did you just say? Ah! Yeah, that was pretty stupid, but again, I just, you gotta play with the toys a little bit before you talk about the movie. Yeah, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Let's just get into the spoilers, and I'm gonna cradle Batman here for a little bit. Look at this big badass. Stand up straight, buddy. Yeah. It's pretty fucking cool. He sits at my desk like a guardian of justice. And in case Superman causes any trouble, he comes in and does what needs to be done. So anyway, yeah, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, my most highly anticipated movie of this year. And like, for I've been anticipating it since it was announced. It's like, I really wanted it to be the greatest movie ever. And yeah, that's high, high aspirations. I wanted it to be a really great comic book movie. I wanted it to be for DC what Avengers was for Marvel. And sadly, it was not quite that. Though it's not a bad movie. In my opinion, this was a pretty good movie. And it's, it's like borderline being great. It's like, there's little things about it that just push back like, I want to love it. And it pushes me back like, I can't let you. There's little things that's just like, ugh. I'm gonna make a prediction, a little bit brave, a little bit bold, but the Ultimate Director's Edition, Director's Cut thing that's like four hours or whatever, three and a half hours, something like that, that's gonna be a great movie. That's my prediction. I guess we'll see how that turns out, and I'll review that when that comes out in July or whenever. So anyway, getting into the movie, you start off, and it's Bruce Wayne's origin, although they're doing a very Zack Snyder, this slow motion music video type way. It looks very cool. It's really, it's pretty epic, and I like that they're doing that. We don't need to spend a whole Batman Begins length of a movie doing the origin. Listen, we can get it done quick and show you what needs to be seen. Even though, I, I like Batman Begins. I like to see this cool origin. It's fun, but then again, everyone is a little bit tired of seeing it over and over. So, just move on. Like, they're walking out, they saw Excalibur got shot, intercutting that with the funeral. Bruce is running away, his parents are getting shot. And the music, Junkie XL and Hans Zimmer did great music in this movie. It's a pretty damn good soundtrack. A lot more Man of Steel than Batman in it, but still pretty damn good. And Bruce Wayne's running away, falls in the Batcave. Then he sees the bats and they attack him. And this was weird, I was sitting there like... Like I was just very concerned what was going on once he starts like rising. I'm like, no, what are you doing? This is weird, don't. What the, what the hell's going on? And then Bruce Wayne chips in like, uh... In the dream, they carry me to the light. A beautiful lie. And I was like, okay, that fixes it. Because I was a little worried. I didn't know what was going on. It's a dream. Okay. Because also, I should mention, during that, when the Waynes are shot, Thomas reaches over and he's like, Martha. Okay, that that's important for later. Don't forget about it. Then we fade out and we get uh, Bruce Wayne showing up to Metropolis. Metropolis and Gotham are twin cities. A short helicopter ride. Bruce Wayne's there. He's driving around, Metropolis is getting destroyed. You know Man of Steel? Zack Snyder is like, let's have Superman finally kick some ass. And as an audience, it's like, it got tedious because it went on forever, but it was more or less kind of cool. Although it's definitely criticism like, damn, Superman smashing shit. But in Man of Steel, it's supposed to be cool. And in this, it's terrific. You're seeing from the ground level, like people are running away. Buildings are coming down all around him. It's horrifying. People are dying left and right. Wayne's trying to get to the Wayne building to get people out. He's like, get out of there already. Why are you still in the building? And they're leaving. And then by the time he gets there, like laser vision's going off and it snaps the building in half, goes down. Bruce Wayne runs like a hero into the dust cloud. He's like a horse. There's some guy walking around like, Bruce Wayne, what are you doing in here? And yeah, that little girl he saves, he saves Wally, pulls the thing up, his legs are crushed, saves that girl. And then where's your mom? Points up. It's like, ah, oh, your heart breaks. And what he just holds her. And you see in his face, you see all that anger, that fury, that rage. And you see fear because Superman and Zod are just throwing each other around. And you can tell it's just like, it's on. I'm getting goosebumps right now. My nipples are hard. Seriously, that's an emotional moment. And you see right there, everything. That's all you need. You could have cut right from that to him suiting up in the robot suit to go beat up Superman. Because you would get it all from that moment. But then sadly the movie goes on. And kind of muddles and messes up all the motivation a little bit. For Bruce Wayne Batman, it's still for the most part pretty solid motivation that keeps going through the movie. Superman, not so much. And so then Lex is getting kryptonite and all this and that, and we learn throughout the movie that Lex has been playing Batman and Superman against each other more or less. That's a uh, twist that was dropped too. It's just kind of like he knows who Clark Kent is, he knows who Batman is, and it's never really, like it's an aside, like Clark Joseph Kent, and that's kind of it. They never had a big reveal, like I know who Batman is, but I won't say anything because why not? But then there's the whole Africa thing. Lois Lane's in there trying to get an interview with the warlord. Jimmy Olsen's a CIA guy. And KG Beast is there. Uh, Jimmy Olsen gets shot in the face. People are getting shot to death. And then Lois is almost shot. She's held captive. Superman drops in. Pushes the fucking guy through a wall. And because of that, like, Superman's in trouble. And it still doesn't make sense. Like, I don't understand. Is it because he took out the warlord, it 
created chaos or is it they're blaming him for shooting people with guns that Superman wouldn't need to use? Lois Lane couldn't just say, there was gunfire because there was a bunch of people and people got shot. It's, it's weird and it doesn't make sense and it distracts. It's like, listen, Superman being blamed, people being fearful of him because of Metropolis is good enough. That's what we wanted, that's what we thought we were getting. But no, it's this Africa incident, which doesn't matter because we're just being introduced to it. We never fully understand it and it doesn't matter. They bring it up, that's the whole reason no one trusts Superman because of that. It's like, no, Metropolis, that's how you should do it, but they don't. So they have Mrs. Incredible, Holly Hunter, which again, that's, in, a, in actual fact, that is kind of clever because the in Incredibles they had the whole superhero thing where they had to go into hiding and they were held accountable for their actions, so having Mrs. Incredible being mad at Superman, like, you have to be accountable for your actions. In my opinion, that's really clever, but, uh, yeah, that's about it. So she doesn't like him, and then Lex Luthor's trying to get kryptonite. It's Cherry. I, I like Lex in this. I'm sorry. I've seen it three times now, and he grew on me more and more each time. The first time, I was like, it's fine, but a little weird, and I'm like, listen, it's weird. It's counterintuitive completely, but I like Lex. It's... <laughs> It's just a weird, it's like Bane, where it's like, that's not the Bane you quite think of. And even that is far more closer to Bane than this is to Lex Luthor. But I like it. It's weird, different, a new interpretation, and I'm going to go with it, because it's, it's interesting. And they were going to get uh, Brian Cranston as Lex, and uh, Jesse Eisenberg was going to be Jimmy Olsen. Imagine that. If, like, just, you get shot in the head, and then the rest of the movie... Uh, I was trying to think, I'm the one who knocks Superman, and he's got kryptonite? I don't know. That could have worked. But, um... For what we're doing, fine. And is it possible that off in the future, Daddy Lex comes in and he's like, he just like disowned his son because he's like, he's a weird little Nicolas Cage acting fruitcake and I'm the real Lex Luthor and I hate Superman because you're a weird alien and I'm the perfect human being and you ruined that for me. Like, having the classic Lex could show up, I doubt they'll ever do it though. And really, Lex, what does he do in this movie? He just hates God. Superman's God, basically, so he hates God and he has daddy issues and that's kind of it. They never... They didn't quite push for further enough the whole motivations for Lex. It's all a little muddled, like just saying, oh, you're God, I hate God. That, that doesn't quite work. That's not enough. And then we get Batman, the Batman, the badass branding, murdering Batman, just destroying people, blowing them away with machine guns. And it's like, it's really fucked up. And I'm going to go with it simply because... I, be I truly believe that in the future, in the Batman movie, maybe even the director's cut, we will get explanations as to why, which really, though, it's a problem that it wasn't in this. He's brutally murdering people, and it's never really brought up, like, um, what is it, new tactics, new rules? He's like, we're criminals, Alfred, nothing's changed. Everything's changed, Master Wayne. Like, that's kind of it. And then, like, 20 years in Gotham, how many good guys are left, how many stayed that way? That, if that was them telling us, that's too subtle. We need an overt, like, Robin died, all this happened, and he abandoned his moral code for a reason. They never, they need to really get that shit on the head and make it uh, very out there. You understand now why. Because that's big. For Batman, the no killing thing is like the number one thing for that character. And for them to kind of just throw it away and breeze over it like he kills, but don't pay attention, don't worry. It's, it's not, that's a bad decision. And I'm hoping in the future, with the right writing, they can make that interesting arc where we actually go with it. Like, listen, Batman's not supposed to kill. But because of these reasons, he abandoned his moral code. With good writing, that could really work. And now the Nightmare Batman sequence. That badass moment. And really, that is so fucking cool. That's so Elseworld, like, Earth 76 or something Batman. Where it's like, this one went really... Shit went really fucking bad, really wrong. And now we're at nuclear Mad Max type war with Superman. You see the dark side symbol in the dirt. He's shooting people left and right, snapping necks. Parademons fly in and knock him out. Chained up, Superman's lasering people and then just... She was my world, and you took her from me. Pah! And punches right through his chest. That's Injustice, God's Among Us stuff. And, you know, at first I was thinking, oh, this is cool Elseworld, but the, I'm... Now I don't know, because I don't... I think even Zack Snyder said, we did it, and we'll explain later. But I'm pretty sure what it is, is that's the future. That is, because of Batman Superman fighting right now, that is their future. That's Batman in the future. That's what's going to happen. Shit's going to go really bad. But then the Flash, I basically take it after Batman gets punched through the chest, Flash is like, that's bad, going back in time now, and warns him. And yeah, so Bruce Wayne like fell asleep or whatever. I, like they don't fully explain what's going on, they leave it a little too much up to interpretation. But I think most people will probably come to the same conclusion. That is the future, that's what's happening, and Flash is going to avert that because he goes back and warns him. Bruce! Bru am I too early? I'm too early. It's Lois. Lois Lane's the key. 
you were right about him, you're always right about him, fear him, find the rock, I think that's kryptonite. Um, you have to find us, you have to find us all, Bruce, put together the Justice League. Yeah, that's basically the message he gives. And because of doing that, he's averting that universe forever. I don't think we'll ever go back there, probably. To that future, I'm pretty sure Flash going that way averted everything. So that now that doesn't have to happen. Bruce knows, like, fear Superman, but also gather the metahumans to help build the Justice League to prevent that horrible future. My only problem with it, really, it's, like, Batman looks amazing. Everything about it aesthetically is so cool. But the execution was a little off. Like, when they get to that tracking shot of him kicking ass, it's a little clumsy, a little clunky, because he's running around, hitting people with the gun, shooting people, and it seems a little bit like they're stumbling, going maybe a little bit too slow to get to their mark so he can hit them. Like, they needed to rehearse and practice it a couple more times so it felt more smooth. So it ended up in execution, it was a little more clunky and clumsy than it should have been. And I wanted to love it, and I still really like it. But yeah, you can tell by watching it, it's just they didn't quite perfect it when they are doing it. Because it's just the execution of it, you can see it looks, it doesn't look perfect, it looks a little clumsy. But it's still an amazing, awesome sequence, and really, that Batman, that that version of Batman looks so fucking cool. I want, like, a cosplay costume of that. It's awesome. That's gonna be the big thing now. But that version of Batman looks so fucking cool, and I think it's been confirmed that in the director's cut, we're gonna see a lot more of that, which is exciting. But anyway, that helps to add to Batman's motivation. Like, I'm scared now, because clearly, Superman did... I just, I don't, was that a nightmare? Was that the future? I think that was the future. He's gonna punch a hole in my chest. That's fucked up. This weird alien's going down. And Lex has been sending him letters. Like, um, Superman, he got the thing, judge, jury, execution, or justice, and he just, Superman's side of the motivation doesn't work, because it's just like, all right, that helps to add, like, he's a vigilante who's ruling by fear. I don't go for that. I'm not, I'm not one for that. I'm for hope, I'm Superman. But is that enough for him to basically, when Batman's trying to stop bad guys, to stop fuck up Batman's car and be like, you're retired now, don't go to the signal, the bat is dead, bury it, and take off? Like, uh, you're letting the bad guys go away, Superman, see them, they're, oh, they're gone, that's your fault. For Superman's side, I never fully got what I needed for him to feel like, yeah, I need to beat up Batman. They never give you that, it's always sort of half-assed, like, I don't like you, and for that I'm gonna smash your fucking car. But no, they needed to go a little bit further, because would Superman ever really pick a fight with Batman? No, so of course Batman's going to be the one more motivated to fight him, but give Superman a reason to at least participate in the fight rather than just he got pissed off. And I'm not talking about the half-assed motivation they give us where it's like, we kidnapped your mom even though you're Superman. He knows every time Lois Lane's in trouble, he knows where she is, he's there immediately to help her. Why not his mom in Man of Steel? Remember that whole scene where she's trying to calm him down, like, focus on my voice, focus on me. Why can't he find his mom? Why doesn't he know when she's in trouble, but he knows when Lois Lane is? I guess she's his world, and his mom's just kind of awesome, but not the same thing. So he can't save her, he can't... The beginning of the movie, Lois Lane's in trouble, and he just shows up, pushes a guy through a wall. They couldn't have did that later. KGB got her at Flamethrower, like, I'll kill her. And he's just like, guess what? All right, I just got you. Like, he's that fast, just blows him through a wall. I don't think his trigger finger's that quick. It could have been so easy. But then we wouldn't get a fight. But before we get into the fight, I know you want to hear me talk about it, let's move back because they do. Before we get a fight, we get like Justice League set up and some poorly executed Justice League set up. I like Wonder Woman. She's cool. That party scene, she's great. She's pulling tricks on Bruce Wayne, stealing his shit. She's immediately cool because she tricked Batman. Okay, that's awesome. And they've had some conversations. They're looking at the sword, this and that. And then she's like, have your drive back. And he's decrypting it. And that's when he falls asleep on the whole nightmare sequence and then he starts looking at some stuff he looks at that picture of Wonder Woman 1918 which is fucking cool I can't wait for that movie and I guess having Bruce look through all the metahuman stuff right there might have been too much where it's like the Wonder Woman reveal is cool now let's have him look at other stuff maybe they felt that would have went on too long so they have it before our fucking epic amazing fight Wonder Woman's gonna read her emails and yeah so the Flash one was pretty fucking cool Flash is amazing I love that CW show right now I'm still in season one but Flash is awesome and this is a different Flash, but you get the point. Flash is cool. And so that whole sequence punches out that guy like that. Amazing. Then we get Aquaman, and it's totally awkward. That, <laughs> that's horrible. Really. All my enthusiasm for Jason Momoa's Aquaman, when I first saw the picture, I'm like... Looks kind of fucking cool and badass, but at the same time I have the complaints. Why can't he just be the blonde boy? Like, he could have been like, I guess if they wanted to make him really cool, it could have been Patrick Swayze in the 80s, but no, it's too late for that. 
Give them the blonde hair, the orange shirt, and the green pants. Well, just be comic accurate. Make him basically play him. He looks kind of silly, but play him like Thor from the Marvel Universe, where, yeah, it's kind of a silly concept, but he's a badass, so it's cool, and he's kind of comic relief in a way. But they want to make him look so cool, and then he's just... Fl it's like he's floating in someone's pool in their backyard, and he's holding his breath the whole time. It's just horrible. And then Cyborg... Oh, that one just, it, it sucks, okay? You got Miles Dyson there, and you got basically this much of a human being strapped to a wall, just this much, you get the point. And he's like, ah, I'm trying to fix him and I can't. And it just looks kind of cheap, it, it really does. And you get the mother box, which isn't explained, that's the only time we see a mother box in the movie. For most people, the first time I was even like, is that the AllSpark from Transformers? What's going on? It attaches, it starts screaming, ah, and that's it. It's just, it's not good. It goes on too long, just like the Aquaman one. Just The Flash is so great, and the other two suck. They suck hard. And the mother boxes, I mean, there's the, the deleted scene after the whole Doomsday fight. It's supposed to be, because Superman ditches Lex in the Kryptonian ship again, because Lex is in there slicing his hand to... Uh, mix his blood with Zod to create Doomsday, and the ship's like, that's uh, against Kryptonian law. He's like, where's Kryptonians? Oh, they're all gone. Then shut the fuck up and do what I said. Like, I, I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> but um, that's how he makes Doomsday. Okay, I don't... I'm, I'm not super familiar with Doomsday in the comics. I know he killed Superman. I should watch that Superman Doomsday thing to get a better understanding of his character. But... I more or less thought I knew what was going to happen, and I'm not super disappointed with Doomsday. I just wish they made him look like Doomsday. But more to the point, after that Superman Doomsday fight, Lex is supposed to be in basically the afterbirth, and he's talking with Yuga Khan. People keep saying Steppenwolf, it's fucking Yuga Khan. Google image search both of them. Yuga Khan looks like that dude way more. And he's holding mother boxes, communicating, I guess, with him through some kind of transmission. And with the mother boxes, he's getting a lot of knowledge of the known universes and all this and that. And then the SWAT shows up, and so Yuga Khan's like, all right, peace, I'm out, and then disappears. And then, so Lex, all snotty knows, is just like that and gets arrested. And that explains why at the end of the movie, he's like, uh, the bell's been rung, they know God is dead, and he's hungry, he's coming for us. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. Like, that's, it was creepy, but it made no sense. And then when you see this scene, it helps make a lot more sense. Even though, it's just 45 seconds, but I'm sure they cut it out because this creates even more questions that need answers. But for those 45 seconds, it still would have answered some questions and it would have helped. And my uh, problem with the whole movie is the fact that if you're going to write a movie with so much complex stuff, so much content crammed up the asshole, uh, that that's your problem right there because if you're writing like a 180 page script you know for a fact that's not going to make it into the full movie that's all the writer's fault that's the director's fault you got to have a vision for a cool movie with a lot of cool stuff in it but be realistic because Zack Snyder keeps really watchmen and this he's making these movies that end up being four hours so some important content keeps getting cut out and saved for later which leaves a less good movie that ends up in theaters but anyway back to what we were talking about the fight the fight and yeah Superman has little to no motivation they took my mom so I'm pissed off and I gotta kill you and listen I get it and Man of Steel when he attacks him he's like don't you mess with my mother his mother makes him hostile the laser eyes that was cool he's just freaking out where is she he laser red eyes he's gonna laser Lex's fucking head off but yeah, he's gonna go, he has to fight Batman, because he's like, listen, it's my mother, he's in a hostile, angry mood. It kind of humanizes him, because he's like, I'm in a bad mood, I'm having a bad day, and I have no time for your shit, Batman. You help me, or you're dead. And Batman's in no mood for him either. We really, from Batman's side, it's been like 18 months that fear, anger, and rage has been stewing in his soul, just boiling to the point of no return. He's just like, I fucking hate this guy. Yeah, he had the little montage saving people. He destroyed Metropolis. Pretty sure he's going to kill me in the future, all these things. I hate this guy. He's got a kryptonite spear. He's going to fucking kill him. And they have an amazing fight. Not as good as Dark Knight Returns. That's a great fight. Watch that animated feature. It'll blow your melon. But it's still a really good fight. Really awesome. He kryptonites him. He starts kicking his ass. See, breathe it in. It's fear. And he starts kicking his ass. And like the part where he stomps him down through the building. And then Superman's like, his chest cavity's been crushed or something. He's in serious pain. And then he's hitting him, but then it wears off. So it's like, ooh, uh, shit. And he's just like, <laughs> he gets tackled through the floor. It's amazing. Superman's kicking his ass again. Then he kryptonites him a second time. And then he's pretty much done for. Throws him down. He's swinging him through pillars. Your parents taught you a lesson. You're here for something. You're here for a reason. My parents taught me a different lesson. Dying in the gutter for no reason. 
They taught me the world only makes sense when you force it to. Like, that's cool. But he's going to kill him. And then Lois Lane, because really, my, my other problem with this movie, besides the horrible subplot, which is kind of uh, basically a result of it, they need Lois Lane in this movie a lot. They're really trying to push her in and make her important instead of just being Lois Lane. But she has to be super important because it's Amy Adams and she's great. She has to be in every scene of the movie. So they gave her the shitty subplot. Now she's here. But her being here was, in my opinion, important because it helps with something. When he's like, you're letting them kill Martha, save Martha. And he's like, why'd you say the name? Bruce is losing his damn mind. Why'd you bring up my mother? I'm going to kill you. And then it's like, no, that, she's like, that's his mother's name. And that totally, I'm emotional again. I'm getting goosebumps right now. I'm getting tingles. It's a great moment. I really like it because it does so much on face value level. People are like, oh, their moms have the same name. So they fist bump and they're bros now. That's not what it is. Their moms have the same name. And that triggers in Bruce Wayne's head like, our mothers have the same name. He's kind of like me in that way. He has a mother. Lois Lane's right there. Someone cares about him. It humanizes Superman in Batman's eyes. And so it's like, he's not a weird alien that needs to die. He's, he's like me, even more than I'd like to admit. He's like me. Ah, and he throws the spear away. So I like that conclusion. Is it a little rushed? Yeah, this movie feels rushed because it's got way more content in it that could possibly fit in a two and a half hour movie and they're trying to get to each little thing. So yeah, it's rushed. So in the future, with Justice League, don't make a fucking four hour movie. Make a two and a half hour movie with all the content in that two and a half hours. But yeah, and they wrap that up. He's like, Martha won't die tonight and he's going to save her. And I don't know what Superman does. Like, wouldn't it take him about a second to fly over to the Kryptonian ship and get Lex? But he doesn't. I don't know what. He stopped to go to IHOP. He was already there in Man of Steel, so he's like, Hey, Pete Ross, I'm sorry about what happened, but I could use a pancake. I got my ass kicked. I just need to replenish. <laughs> I don't know. What the fuck was he doing? Batman goes, kicks all kinds of ass. It's amazing. It's like Arkham Knight. He's just breaking the shit out of people. Throwing a box, a crate at a dude's head and all this. Uses a gadget to de uh, defuse the, all their guns. Total Arkham Knight stuff right there. It's amazing. Kicking all kinds of ass. Some of the Chris Nolan action in the Dark Knight movies were good. Like the Bane Batman fight I liked. But at the end of the day, you watch this and that, it's like, damn, the Chris Nolan movies look like such old man fights in comparison. Because this is how Batman should fight. He's agile, he's fast, he fucks people up. It's amazing, it's everything I wanted in this movie and more. That's the thing that really, it's like this. The car chase was fucked up with him whipping people around and destroying them left and right. But at the end of the day, when you're seeing Batman like this, kicking ass, that's what you want, that's what you need. And it's great. And they have, they have a lot of Dark Knight references in this, the whole fight in the robot suit and everything, the point where Superman gets all nuclear'd out. But um, he busts through the wall, grabs the Gatling gun, I'll kill her, believe me, I'll do it. I believe you, and blows him up. It's like, God damn. And he saves her, I'm a friend of your sons. I know, the cape, I figured. It's like, you know what, that line works for what he needs to, because in reality, would you really want Batman running up there like, I tried to kill your son, but now we're kind of buddies, and we, you, you have the same name as my mother. High five. Like, that doesn't work, so listen. People are making fun of that line so hard, it's like, I get it, because they're not really friends, but it's the same as, like, Civil War. It's like, he's my friend, so was I. It's like, no, you weren't. You were not friends. You never really got along. Sure, you played on the same Avengers team, but you were never really buddy-buddy. That was Hulk. But anyway, yeah, so he saves her, and then Superman goes to stop him, and kind of just watches Doomsday get created. He's like, what is this shit? Instead of just like, laser blast this machine, something bad's happening. But no, <laughs> he lets Doomsday happen. They have their fight, and again, Doomsday... It's just, he looks like a cave troll. It doesn't look like Doomsday. And throughout the fight, like, he evolves. He's releasing, like, bursts of energy in, like, just explosions. It's kind of terrifying. To just watch him, like, building up, like, I gotta release it. Ah! Like, it's kind of creepy. And he's fighting, and he's unkillable. Superman does a smart thing, punches him into space, like, all right, no one will get hurt up here. Good idea, right? Oh, is that a nuke? Blah! And then he's dead. Like, <laughs> Doomsday crashes back down to Earth and just gets stronger. And Superman's up there dead. Like, fuck. And unless the, if the sun didn't hit him, he would have been dead. But the sun resurrects him, comes back down, and then <laughs> it's a little too convenient. Like, he's in a, he's in an abandoned part of this uh, Rikers Island. And Batman leads him to an abandoned part of Gotham to get the spear. It's like, okay, clearly they want to make up for the Man of Steel thing. But even then, they don't because they abandon the whole Metropolis subplot. So... I don't know, but it's it's like total shoehorned in. It's safe to fight over here. It's all good. But yeah, then they have their epic fight. Batman's almost killed. Wonder Woman saves his ass. She's using the bracelet. She's got the lasso. She's got the sword. She's cutting Doomsday's hand off and all this and that. They're kicking his ass. It's amazing. It's really cool to see the Trinity fighting on screen for the first time. And they're doing it pretty damn good. Ass kicking, but then Lois Lane... 
Ah, oh, it's just redundant. She throws a spear in the water to get rid of it, and then she's drowning to get it. Because, like, maybe we should use this. So she almost drowns. Superman saves her. Then he goes again and almost drowns. It's, ah, oh, that's redundant and not needed. Again, it's just like, give Lois Lane something to do. Who cares? Yeah, so Superman does that, and Batman's really just like, grapple away, grapple away. Gas gun, I can't do much. <laughs> but Wonder Woman's mostly kicking his ass. And she's great. Early in the movie, she was really good. And then here, she really shines. I've killed things from other worlds before. And she's getting knocked around and like smirking and smiling. Like, this is fun. I'm going to kick your ass. That's so, that's perfect. And at the end of it, she's got him in the last of Batman shoots a kryptonite again. Superman flies in the kryptonite spear, stabs him, gets stabbed. It's like, damn, are they really going to kill him? He has to pull himself in further to finish it. It's like... Oh shit, and they actually do kill Superman. It's like, they got some balls for sure to do that, but then they kind of ruined it. They had this great moment, not quite as emotionally um, satisfying as you want, where I wanted to feel really bad. When what was happening, I'm like, I should be more invested than I am, but I'm still like, well, that's fucked up. But at the end of it, shouldn't you really be bummed out? Like, oh my god, this just happened. And then they go into the funerals and all this and that. Superman, not Superman, Batman attacks Lex. And then Lex does the whole ding, 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 ding. And which is creepy. The movie almost turns into Lord of the Rings where it's like, here's 86 endings. It just keeps going on and on. And then we get more of the funeral. It's like, we have to find all the other metahumans. What if they don't want to be found? We need them to fight. Why? Just the feeling. It's like, yeah, shit's going to go bad and we need the Justice League. And that's a nice way to do it, is the fact that Superman dies, thus creating a need for a Justice League. I think that's pretty cool. And so they're going to do that, but then we see grave, coffin, dirt, it moved. It's like, ruined it. It really, it's so bad. Make an edit. Just go back. While it's still in theaters, just edit the dirt moving out. Because honestly, we all know he's probably going to come back. A Justice League movie without Superman would seem ridiculous and utterly impossible and why would you even make that decision so we know he's gonna come back so why even bother showing us that just make that the first five minutes of the next movie is yeah he came back or whatever it's just that decision I don't like because it makes the whole funeral process and everything it makes it all pointless because guess what he's alive anyway so who cares it just ruins that and yeah did I mention I didn't like how doomsday never looked like doomsday I really like he evolves throughout the fight and he's getting chopped up with the sword and everything like, by the end of it, couldn't they have, like, after one of those explosions, he looks like Doomsday, all the bones pop out in the right way, he looks like him, and then that when he kills Superman, he looks like Doomsday proper? That little touches like that would have worked. Yeah, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. I didn't touch on every single aspect of the movie. I'd be here all day. Trust me, I filmed this twice before, I know. But, uh, yeah, this is as short and sweet and quick as I could. Touch on the big spoiled things like Batman's a killer and they don't really address it. I hold hope for the future they do, but not right now. Cri uh, Krypton terraforming uh, Metropolis thing. Amazing. Batman in that situation, or Bruce Wayne, I should say, amazing. The whole origin opening credits, amazing. Their fight, pretty fucking good and satisfying, although the motivation for it kind of wrecks it. It's like the motivations on Superman's side are contrived and not what you want. It's just like the little things where it's like when you're writing the movie you make it better. The whole Justice League set up poorly executed and also in the wrong place. Don't put it right. It's like we're building up to the fight. Now read some emails. Alright now let's fight. Like that's bad placement. Move it back a little bit more. The Doomsday fight amazing. It doesn't look like Doomsday but it's still a fucking cool fight. There's all these things where it's like there's so much greatness packed in here and it's just like I, I just wish it wasn't like I, I have to hold out hope that like everything is going to work and flow nicely together because of this ultimate director's cut where everything is going to work much better. I just wish they like wrote a script that would adequately fit a two hour runtime movie where it's like we're going to do everything we need to in this two hours. We don't need this ultimate director's cut for everything to work properly. That's the problem. It's too rushed and then shit's not working and motivations all this and that. There is some bad writing that I don't even know if the director's cut will fix but it's like god I wish you executed a perfect movie here. It is a little disappointing but still you can't dispute there's so much greatness packed in this movie it is a good movie a flawed movie but a damn good movie the good far outweighs the bad it's not the success of avengers it's not the total crowd pleasing amazingness that you want but still i gotta stand by i enjoyed this movie quite a lot i've seen it three times each time i've watched it it's become more fun to watch each time i still enjoy this movie quite a bit i can admit its flaws i've talked about them i've also talked about a lot of the fucking cool stuff this movie is good and I, again, a little bit bold, a little bit brave prediction that that director's cut, when it comes out, first off, I will do a review for it and everything, but I'm going to predict that that's a great movie. That is what this should have been. 
just with the longer run time. So I guess we'll see how that turns out. But this movie, like I said, still has flaws. And I want to put it up there. I want to be like, yeah, it's like fucking A, A plus, but I can't. I can't lie. When I watch the movie, I have quite a lot of fun. But the negatives always poke out and like, you can't forget about me. I won't let you. They're, they're interfering with parts of the movie. I'm borderline on it, B, B plus. And you know what? It's, there's so much of it that what it does right, it does so right. It's so cool. It's so awesome. And then it's, it does have flaws. But again, the good outweighs the bad quite a bit. But I'm borderline, and you know what? I'm going to give it a B. I'm upping it to B for Batman. And the thing about it is, any other day, like maybe tomorrow, I'll feel like, no, it's a B plus, or nah, it is a B, or B plus. Like I kind of flip flop back and forth between the rating for this because I'm not sure. So we'll keep it at B for now. Keep in mind, who knows? Maybe tomorrow I feel like it is a B plus. Who knows? That's what it is. I'm borderline on it, but I enjoy the movie quite a bit. I'm a fan. This Batman, come on here, hug me. But yeah, so comment below. Tell me thought of Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. What do you think of all the spoiler stuff? Guaranteed I've skipped over something you wanted me to talk about. Like, what do you think of this? I'm sorry. You know what? Lex Feet and Jolly Ranchers is funny. And the, also the UN, not the UN, it's Congress. That whole Granny's Peach Tea. Super tense moment. When that happens, and it's just everything gets quiet and you're like, Ooh, you get real uneasy watching that scene. It's great. And Superman, that scene. That's more motivation why Batman doesn't like Superman. But then, like, he goes to ever. Yeah, I could sit here all day talking about stuff, okay? But that, that is my, most of my spoiler thoughts. Comment below, tell me yours, and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.